Hi, welcome, welcome to Make It With Mod Podge. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a really fun beginner Mod Podge project for you. We're gonna create some fall decor. I'm Kathy Fillion, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. If you've never done decoupage before, this is a great beginner project, but I'm also going to share with you some tips and tricks. So I'm gonna start with a wood base like this. I love that this pumpkin has three different tiers. We're going to decoupage paper onto this. You can pick these up at any craft store. I've seen them at dollar stores. You can even do a makeover of something from a thrift store. So we're going to use a couple of different folk art paints for this. I've got a cream and then a little bit of a barn brown color. And I'm gonna use a flat paintbrush and I'm gonna use a stencil brush just to add some texture. For those three different pumpkin panels, I've picked three different scrapbook papers I'm gonna use. One with a pumpkin design, an old wood barn, and this cute plaid. I really wanted to go with this fall look and I love the addition of the blue to that. I'm using matte Mod Podge. You're going to need some scrap paper to make a pattern and a pencil and a scissor. I'm using wax paper for my painting and my Mod Podging. I've got an assortment of silk flowers and picks. I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm gonna use yet. And we're gonna use a little hot glue to glue it all together. So the first step is that we wanna create a pattern for our pieces at the top. So we wanna create, in the top I mean this raised portion here. So we're going to just go ahead, let me move some of my stuff out of the way here. And I should say I'm using matte Mod Podge on this because I just wanted a sort of flat look. But if you wanted gloss, you could use gloss. And if you wanted something in between, you would use satin. So for this, we're going to create a pattern of that elevated, that little top section there. And to do that, it's very simple. You can just take a piece of scrap paper, hold it into position, and go around and rub that with your finger. And we're gonna go ahead and just do the piece next to it. So I'm using scrapbook paper, but you could use color copies of family photos. You could use wrapping paper, napkins, really any kind of fun fabric that you like, or fabric, you could use fabric, any kind of fun print that you like. So I think we've got our first little pattern piece there made. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see I've got those raised lines and it's showing me where to cut. And for those, then I will translate that onto my paper. So I'm gonna continue doing this and then we're gonna move on to the painting. Okay, I've got all three of my patterns made. I'm gonna set these aside because I'm gonna cut them out of my decorative paper while my paint is drying. So to get started with the painting, I am using some Folk Art Matte Finish Paint and this is in vanilla and it's just a really pretty creamy color. So we'll go ahead and squirt some of that out. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, why do you need to paint the whole part where you're gonna put the Mod Podge? And I like, <laughs> look, it's almost the same color as the wood. I like to paint where I'm gonna Mod Podge also, because sometimes wood is treated with different types of finishes or something like that, and I know that the Mod Podge is going to stick really well to the full cart paint. So that's just a personal preference. I tend to paint the whole piece just to finish off the wood and kind of prep the wood almost like a primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole piece with the vanilla and then I will go in and we're gonna add some texture to these edges using the brown color. And this is just a really simple paint job, just giving it a little bit of a finished look. Okay, now that we've got our vanilla color down, let's go ahead and add some of the brown. Now this is a honeycomb color. I just wanted something that was kind of a little bit of a rustic brown. And for this, I want to use a stencil brush. You can really use any kind of a loose bristled brush. And we're gonna tap off a lot of that paint because we just want to kind of go in and dry brush the edges just to give it some texture and a little bit of antiquing. And we're going to have the paper, we'll be covering these sections here, 
but I wanna go in and try to get some of that brown down in between. So just paint and tap off. And just kinda go in. It's all gonna disappear once we put that paper on it, but we wanna get that brown in between the sections where the paper is going to go. And you can see I'm just painting just by kind of tapping and rubbing. And you can see how it's starting to give it just some highs and lows there. And it'll create a really pretty rustic look. This is cute for Halloween or Thanksgiving. It's really great seasonal decor that's so easy to make. Just look at those wood surfaces and grab some scrapbook paper. Again, napkins, wrapping paper, fabrics. Go ahead and get that all in there. And we will just hit our edges as well. Give it kind of little taps. And once you have your painting all done, you can set that aside and just let it dry. This paint dries pretty fast, but you do wanna have it be completely dry before you move on to the Mod Podging. All right, our painting is done. We're just gonna set it aside and let it dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna share with you some tips for cutting out your patterns. The first thing that we have to decide is which one's gonna go on the top, the middle, or the bottom. Now I'm doing three different papers. You could all do, you know, you could do one of the same paper. It's endless, it's whatever you wanna do. I think I like this order, plaid on the bottom, blue in the middle, pumpkins on top. So I did number my patterns, and if you're doing something like this, it is a good idea to number them because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So you can see I've got number one, number two, and number three. So let's start with our bottom piece, which is our plaid, and that's number three. And I will show you quickly how you can cut that out. So we're gonna work on the back side of the paper, and we're going to place our pattern down this direction. But before we do it, Let's add a little bit of tape to the pattern to each piece. That'll just hold it in place. You could use the blue painter's tape or you could use tape like this, just little clear tape. So we're gonna go ahead and place that onto our paper. Whoops, we're gonna have to go the other direction, guys. Well, that's all right. Our plaid will just go the other direction. This is our larger section. Let's go ahead and pick it up. Grab a new piece of tape. And we will go this way. All right, there we go. Now we're in business. And just gently press down. And then if hope you can see, I can see the lines. I'm hoping that you guys can see those lines on the camera. They're very faint. You could pencil them in if you needed to. That would be no problem. Now you're just gonna go ahead and cut on those lines. If you want it to be, you know, it, you're hand cutting, so it's not gonna be exactly precise every single time. But if you want it to be a little bit on the inside and have some of that wood edge showing, then you would just go ahead and cut a little further in on the crease line that you made. Okay, so it's still wet over here, but if I take it over there, you can see that we've got that first piece coming in. I just need to trim off the bottom here. And that is the shape for the right side of the bottom pumpkin. And you'll just continue doing that cutting along that crease line. Okay, so you can see I got all my patterns cut out of my decorative paper, and we are all dry and ready to start our Mod Podging. So I told you this was going to be super beginner friendly, and it is. This is, if you've never even Mod Podged with paper before, you are going to be able to do this project. It's so simple. So let's just go ahead and pull over our pieces. This is our lower section. And for this project, 
we're going to be placing our Mod Podge on the back of our piece. Let's go ahead and get our wood piece over here ready to go and we will start with our center section i'm using the matte mod podge again if you wanted it shiny you could use gloss and if you wanted it in between matte and shiny you would use satin so i'm going to apply it just a thin coat you don't need too much and make sure you get all your edges good then we're just going to position that right onto our wood piece and you have a little time for wiggle room Ahead and get that into position just like so and then you'll press down with your fingers and I like to start in the center and kind of press and go around make sure those edges are down now at this point we are gonna top coat this in one second but I like to wait about 15 minutes before I do my top coating so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my pieces down and then we will wait a little bit and then we will do the top coating and the top coating is really where you get that great kind of finish Okay, so I've got all of the paper down and I'm loving how it turned out. Again, I'm doing the three different papers, but you could do all the same paper, you could do family photos, it's endless. So now let's go in and give this a top coat and that's gonna be what seals it. So Mod Podge is a glue and a sealer. Sometimes I do projects where I only use it as a glue and sometimes I do glue and sealing. So today we wanna seal this paper down so it lasts for a long time and it's very easy to use. I'm doing the same um, paintbrush that I used to apply it, and we're just going to apply a top coat, and I like to just put a nice thin coat, and for me, what's important is that the brush strokes are all going in the same direction. You don't wanna be like all willy-nilly because that's gonna create uh, brush strokes in the dried finish. So just go ahead and do some brush strokes this is the same formula that I use to apply the paper. So Mod Podge is a glue and a sealer. So you can glue your papers down and then you can seal them up. Every now and then you might get a little piece of Mod Podge that's dried from the lid. Just go ahead and wipe that with your finger. And you could seal over all of the painted wood if you wanted to and it's not going to hurt it. It will just give it the same finish. So that's a personal choice. For this project, I kind of wanted that rustic look, so I'm trying to just seal on the paper portion. So you'll just go in and do nice, smooth, even brush strokes on top of all of the paper. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna continue on doing this. We're gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna add our silk flowers. All right, we are all dry, and now we're gonna go ahead and add some of our floral bits. I love this one. Look at all that fun detail. So we'll just go ahead and hot glue that base down first. Just get that into position. Okay, and then I love, look, I've got some of this. So let's cut a few of those sprigs off. Maybe a couple of those. Oh my goodness, that one is very tough. Okay, and we'll just add a little hot glue to that. And let's add some of that orange in there. So pretty more down in here there we go and then I've got these really awesome pumpkins so let's clip one of those off you don't you know don't be afraid to clip some of this stuff that looks great there but I feel like we need a little bit more greenery over here so let's add a little bit more coming off the back side 
Sometimes when you cut these, they might come undone a little bit. And if that happens, you can always wrap with a little bit more floral tape or a little bit of ribbon. And go ahead and do a little crisscross like that. So let's add a little hot glue to over here. Sometimes the floral part of this, it's so fun, but it just kind of takes a life of its own. You gotta kind of keep working it till you're happy with the look and the scale that you want, depending upon your space. Go ahead and get that down there. And then let's move that there. And hopefully our little pumpkin can perch right there. It looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead I think for this, I'll add some glue to that pumpkin. With some super hot glue. I got my finger protector. Get that pumpkin in. And then at this point, you can go in and add more of your sprigs, whatever you want to do. Okay, here's our final design. All I have to do now is get rid of all of those pesky hot glue cobwebs. I love how it turned out. I hope that you learned how you could pattern off a wood piece like that. It's so simple to do. You can really create your own fun fall home decor. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I'll be back here next week with another fun video. Make sure you use those hashtags Plaid Crafts and Mod Podge so everybody back at Plaid can see what you're making. And check us out on all of our different social channels. You can find me at Handmade Happy Hour on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. I'll see you next week.